Three senior members of Congress say there's a better than 50 percent chance they'll make a deal so the country doesn't go over the fiscal cliff. But that doesn't mean federal employees and vendors are off the hook from additional changes to pay, benefits, and contracting. Federal News Radio's executive editor Jason Miller is here with some of the latest thinking on Capitol Hill. Jason, good morning. Good morning, Tom and Emily. All right, so why are these three senior lawmakers confident that sequestration and other financial challenges will be met? Well, you know, I was surprised to hear yesterday that Senators Mark Warner, a Democrat from Virginia, Bob Corker, a Republican from Tennessee, and Congressman Chris Ann Holland, a Democrat from Maryland, and the ranking member of the Budget Committee all pronounced they really are optimistic that something real will get done before that January 1st deadline when sequestrations, uh, tax cut rollbacks, and other financial changes are scheduled to take place. In fact, Warner is most confident of the three. I think it's at 80% plus that we will avoid sequestration. The question is, though, is this going to be a big enough deal, and will it actually be enough of a down payment that it will lead to something else subsequently that will actually avoid the kind of enormous consequences of $16 trillion of debt? Now, Van Hollen and Corker say it's more than a 50% likelihood that sequestration will not happen. Corker did put out a deficit reduction plan about a couple, two, three weeks ago that includes several long-held and Republican-sponsored ideas, including less generous inflation adjustment for Social Security and a gradual increase of regular Social Security retirement age to 68 and Medicare eligibility to 67. His plan also includes a $749 billion increase in higher tax revenue and capping itemized deductions at $50,000. Now, all three spoke yesterday in an event on that on what the fiscal cliff could mean to businesses sponsored by Bloomberg government in Deloitte and Washington. Now, Corker says the debt limit is the real line in the sand for something to get done, and, and the, the country is going to reach a debt limit again in the coming months. Now, Corker says he wouldn't support kicking the can down the road or going only for a small portion toward what's needed, which is many, what may, many people say it's at least $4 trillion in deficit reduction over 10 years. You know, there's an old adage that says you don't learn a lot from the second kick in the shin from the mule. Okay. <laughs> We've been down this road of process. We had 12, I think, very high caliber people who worked on the super committee, six Republicans and six Democrats. Who would have ever thought when we're going to spend $45 trillion of your money over the next decade that this outstanding group of people could not come up with $1.2 trillion in savings? I mean, it's almost beyond belief, is it not? So for me, I just have to tell you, since I know all the decisions that we have to make are not intellectually demanding, they just take political courage. I mean, again, there's not a lot to learn from a second go around. We've had two dry runs. This 112th Congress put the fiscal cliff in place so that we would resolve this issue right now. And that's what we need to do. So the discussion yesterday really revolved a lot around the political issues of taxes and entitlements. But even, you know, Senator Mark Warner says the trickle-down effect on other things, such as contracting and the debt ceiling discussion and the possibility of a government shutdown, all have an impact that's almost nearly as great. So what should vendors and federal employees be paying attention to when it comes to these fiscal negotiations? I think the first thing is all the different plans that are popping out. I, I mentioned Senator Corker's plans earlier. Now, one of his, a couple things in his plan that really kind of got the uh, 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 drew the ire of federal employee groups, when, and one of them called it the greatest hits of anti-federal employee union, was to freeze pay of federal employees until 2015, or replace one federal worker with every three that leaves, and other spending cuts to benefits. So I actually caught up with Corker after the event to ask about his plan, and why didn't he address any government contractor cuts as well? You know, the Pentagon cannot produce an audited statement of where their monies are going. There's no doubt a lot of contracting issues, especially there, can and should be looked at. Because one thing that I think you got a lot of criticism for in your bill was the idea of freezing federal pay for 2015 right. for looking at attrition rates of 3 to 1, which was very similar to Simpson Bowles, but still I think the employee unions weren't happy with it. Can you just give me kind of a response to what made you go down that path? Well, I mean, I don't think anybody around here would disagree that our federal government is... is is larger than it needs to be. And so certainly having constraint on your direct overhead is an important thing to do with employees. But also, I couldn't agree more on the contracting piece. And hopefully part of what we'll see happen with the Budget Control Act, where we're cutting a trillion dollars uh, over the next decade, is going to be tremendous compression on what we're doing through government contracting. Now, I also caught up with uh, Congressman Van Hollen after the event to get his perspective on where he sees potential cuts that could affect contractors and federal employees. 
Van Hollen says the first sign of things to come came from the defense authorization bill that the Senate passed the other night. There are proposals out there which would save the government money by saying that taxpayers aren't going to reimburse uh, contractors uh, for the amount of the salary work on a government contracted job above a certain level. And as I say, I think it's in the range of uh, 250000 may even be a little lower. Now, the provision he's talking about is the contractor pay cap. Right now, agencies reimburse the first $763,000 of an executive salary based on a specific type of contract. Under this provision, it would come down to $230,000. Also included in, in the bill, DOD would have to issue a report to Congress detailing contractor compensation costs over the past several years. Now, the support for this provision in the House isn't very strong, and obviously industry associations are against it. Neither Van Hollen nor Warner promised, at least yesterday, to protect federal employees or contractors from becoming part of this fiscal cliff deal. We're speaking with Federal News Radio's executive editor, Jason Miller. And Jason, by the way, shouldn't we also say that the Congressional Budget Office scored that provision on contractor reimbursement and said it would have no fiscal effect? It, it, that's, that's fascinating because um, one of the things about the, that both the, the industry argues is they won't be able to recruit people, and, and this administration has been a big proponent to change the cap as an issue that the government shouldn't pay so much money. So it's interesting the CBO comes out and says, hey, it's really revenue neutral. All right. Did you get a sense that there's a growing understanding of the impact of all these last-minute deals and slowdowns uh, that are having on agencies and their contractors? Well, it's interesting because Senator Warner made a very fascinating comment about how many, how many contractors are now calling calling him, is calling his office or coming up to him at events and saying, just make a decision and even asking him to implement, you know, the recommendations in the simpson Bowles recommendations instead of sequestration. Now, he says simpson Bowles, which is, was the bipartisan commission looking at how to fix the deficit, called for about $5 trillion in spending reductions and revenue increases, while the Budget Control Act requires about the same amount. Maybe the most ridiculous thing that has taken place in the last couple of years particularly from some of those who say they want to not make government inefficient, is this constant jerking back and forth of potential government shutdowns. Nothing is more inefficient to the largest organization in the world, the federal government, and DOD is a subset of that, than starting and stopping the amount, the tens if not hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars that is lost each time you grind to an almost near halt of government and start contracting, restart it, is crazy. Everybody I've talked to said, you know, end of the day, we'll live with whatever your budget you give us, but give us that two to three year runway so you can plan against it. Now, Corker actually agrees with Warner about the inefficiencies of the stopping starting of government. He says that's why anyone who puts a line in the sand around taxes or entitlements or the debt ceiling, that's what the problems are caused so much. And he's, you know, Corker, for, for even though, you know, his a uh, deficit reduction plan, you know, was, 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 you know, lambasted by the federal employee unions. He's one of the few Republicans who are coming out and saying, you know, maybe revenue increases is something we need to start considering. And, and that's what I think goes back to his line in the same comment. Anyone has a red line, you're just going to cause it's more trouble than it's worth across the board. Now, all three maker, all three lawmakers that, that were at the event yesterday are optimistic the government will avoid the fiscal cliff. But, uh, you know, I think Fed, federal employees, contractors are going to be prime targets for cuts and changes, and they should, uh, you know, obviously keep an eye out for it, as we will, too. And, Jason, I have one more question. Uh, when that proposal comes up to only hire one new federal employee for every three that retire or leave, uh, did any, has anyone anywhere on either side of the aisle said that, that supports that idea? Have any of them suggested, okay, and meanwhile, this program we won't do anymore, or this bureau will close for good and forever i mean how you know a third fewer people coming in what will they do uh, if the workload doesn't change correct i think that's one of the biggest issues that that i think that the congress always kind of overlooks is that you can't do this idea of more with less there's a breaking point and the idea that and i think many agencies are already at this breaking point when you talk to agencies yes there's a, there's some waste and there's some fat that can be cut but for the most part when you talk to federal employees very few will tell you well i only worked 22 hours last week and i had nothing to do so i read the paper for for you know for 4 hours of my day i mean everybody is is at the limit in terms of their, their productivity and what they can get done. And obviously there's always outliers that you can't put a blanket across. It. We all have that with our own offices, though our office is perfect, Tom, you know that. Um, but, but the point, I think, is, is that nobody ever talks about cutting programs. And that's something that Francis Rose, you know, their in-depth host, often mentions as well, that, you know, you, you got to, 
it's it's doing less with less, and and that's another conversation I think that that's got to start have, happening. Perfectly stated. Federal News Radio's executive editor Jason Miller, all work, no play, right, Jason? Well, that's how you make a good day or something, right? <laughs> all right, thanks for joining us.